This next question comes from Elisa Okafer, who has got in touch through YouTube and asks, can we talk about evolution and creation? Well, yes, we can. I'm going to do that in a minute or so. But I just wanted to say, why not subscribe to this channel and then you can ask me any question you like. And I might even answer it if I know the answer. But if it's too difficult, I might ignore it. Anyway, are humans still evolving? Some time ago, roughly as long as your age plus about nine months, your parents had sexual intercourse. They may even have enjoyed it. We know because you're here, as proof of both their carnal desires and the successful transmission of their genetic material. And that, of course, is how evolution is driven, by reproduction. But is this still true for humans? Let's start at the beginning. Charles Darwin's famous theory said that naturally occurring genetic mutation between generations would cause a species to constantly adapt or evolve over time. Some of these mutations would improve an animal's chances of survival. In very simple terms, a herbivore with a slightly longer neck would be able to reach leaves slightly higher up a tree. Therefore, it would get more to eat, it would be stronger, and it would live longer. And that would increase the chances that it would breed and then pass these long-necked genes on to the next generation. Repeat this process tens of thousands of times and you end up with a giraffe or given a different evolutionary imperative, maybe a rabbit that can run faster than a wolf, or a stick insect that can disguise itself as a stick. More excitingly, Darwin realized that tracing this evolutionary process backwards over many millions of years proved that all life came from a common source. So monkeys are our distant cousins, as are trees and fleas and moss. And tragically, we are all related to Alan Sugar. By the way, if you are fundamentally anti-Darwin, then you're not going to agree with any of this, so it's probably best if you go and watch something else on YouTube. Planet of the Apes, maybe. Anyway, are we still evolving? Well, as we've got richer and fatter, we've turned most of the process of natural selection on its head. Most of the people living on planet Earth, certainly those lucky enough to be watching YouTube, no longer have to worry about survival. We have enough to eat to ensure that the vast majority of us will reach an age where, assuming we can find a willing partner, we will be able to breed, produce offspring. Neither do we have to run away from predators on a daily basis. Well, not unless you include PPI claim scamsters and charity muggers, both of which are very irritating, certainly, but they don't actually affect your ability to reproduce. We know that certain characteristics will improve your chances of breeding. Great abs, long flowing hair, a really cool tattoo. But if you have a look around you for a moment, you will see that it's not as if ugly and stupid people don't get to have children as well. Here's another strange conundrum. We're becoming too cosmopolitan. The genetic mutation that drives evolution can most commonly be found in what we would politely call a small gene pool. It relies on a certain amount of inbreeding. But as technology has shrunk the world, humans have started traveling further and further afield to find their life partners, sometimes even ordering them off the internet. And this is cutting down on that natural mutation. Scientists really can't decide if we're still evolving or not. Some claim that in the absence of any imperative to become bigger or stronger, we are effectively in an evolutionary backwater. But others reckon that as a species, we are responding to the challenges of the modern world by becoming cleverer and cleverer. We actually have smaller brains than our distant ancestors. The human brain, the average male human brain of 20,000 years ago had a volume of about 1,500 cc. That average volume of human male brain is now 1,350 cc. But you'd have to conclude, looking at our plasma screen televisions and our microwave ready meals, that we are more intelligent than Stone Age man. He only had a flinty axe. But there is plenty of evidence to suggest that we are still evolving. About a third of people are now born without wisdom teeth, those extra gnashes that primitive people needed to chew on tree bark and nuts and roots and all that sort of Sort of thing. Now we live on a diet of Chinese takeaways and pizzas, people are simply being born without them. And then there's milk, possibly the best proof going that we are adapting to the world around us. 10,000 years ago, before anybody had had the bright idea of milking a cow, no human could digest the lactose in milk beyond early childhood. 
But now, after 100 years of eating cream and milk and squeezy cheese in a can, 99% of people can. Which means that, in another thousand generations' time, intelligent human beings may be able to watch The X Factor without being sick. Which will mean that, yes, we have evolved. Today, viewers, you will notice that I am modelling the Head Squeeze T-shirt, featuring an iconic image of the presenter James May. That's me, but with a more chiselled jaw than he actually has and a slightly better nose. Now, these T-shirts are not available to buy, either in the shops or online. In fact, so far, we have produced just 100 of these exclusive garments. And to earn one, you can send us an interesting question, which means you'll have to subscribe first, or we may send you one merely because we like you. But there is no other way of having one. So, subscribe now, ask a question, and you too could effectively have a face like mine.